Okay, Sairam to you all and my loving Sairam and my pranams to my elders and my pranams to the lotus feet of Bhagwan Baba. I want to share a presentation of some beautiful pictures and my story. My presentation, first I will start with uh, my pranams to my million father and mother, which is Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba, uh, my God and my Guru. Why am I using the word my God and my Guru is, my Guru is I take my mother, Justice Padma Kastigin. Many of you all might have met her and heard about her. She was a first lady judge of Calcutta High Court and a lady, first lady barrister judge. She was, she was the only lady in Bhagwan Central Trust and also Swami's erstwhile World Council. Uh, before Central Trust came in, there was this World Council where only two female members were there. One was Raj Mataji of Bhavnagar and my mother. And she also headed the erstwhile human value cells. Swami first started the three cells, education, the Balvikas and the human values. Education was, uh, Balvikas was by Sharla auntie, uh, Sharla Sar auntie. And then there was Gita Ghosh of, media, of education and my mother was in the human value cell. And I call Bhagwan Baba is my God. I don't call, he is. Anytime I go to any temple or anything, I close my eyes. We are Bengalis, we follow Durga Puja. I see the Durga Murti, but I see Swami's face there. My mother is my guru because she showed me the path towards God. Not only she gave birth to me, but also she inculcated the whole spiritual path and took me to my Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba's divine feet. And, there, and this brings back to an incident a long time back in an interview in Prashanti Nilayam, where there were a lot of us there, Swami asked that, asked us that who is the most important person after God? So all the men pumped up and said, it is the father. Swami said, no, it is the mother because the mother tells you who your father is. So first is God, then your mother. So that is where Swami always goes on and talking about is Matri Seva and Matri Bhumi. Not only I give pranams to my father, my million father and mother, Satya Sai Baba, but my mother, who's my, my guru also. She was also my best friend. <clears throat> Why do I call Satya Sai Baba Swami as my million father and mothers? Because there was, he held my hand and said, you, this happened after my father passed away suddenly in 1991. It was an interview on March 14th, after we had completed our 11 days of puja and we went to Puttaparthi. Immediately after the 11th day of the Shrad, we flew down to Puttaparthi and Swami called us for an interview. So he looked at us and looked at my mother. He had tears in his eyes when he saw my mother wearing the widow's garb. And he just looked at me and my brother, held with both hands, he held our hand like this and said, you lost one father, but I'm your million father and then your million mothers. And that is the day when since then he's been my million mother and father. Why am I talking about this? My topic I had given is the example of faith and acceptance of his divine decision, no question asked. That is a lesson which I learned that day was I was a very soft namby-pamby daughter. I used to never talk and all that. And suddenly without notice, my father passed away. And I sent a message to Mr. Narayan that time was with Swamis that I told the doctors in the hospital not to take out his uh, life support system because I was praying for the miracle because we all pray for miracle. Narayan then said that uh, did I said tell Swami that my father's pastor has a mass
Sunitiji, you need to refresh your uh, network. Went into a trance in the veranda where my father used to sit, and he used to tell. Uh, he was telling my uh, the boys there that Padma's husband, that uncle who used to wear a dhoti and said, he's come to me. So I knew that Baba's my father. We Bengalis call our father's Baba. Baba's gone. So that's the time when I went and just sat next to my father's body. And I said, Baba, God... Usually people have a tendency, Bhagwan kyu kiya hai, and blame God, why are you punishing us and everything. Somehow I just told that Baba, whatever you do is for good of us. God cannot do bad for us. It is only for our good. So you've taken our father away without any notice, without explanation. My father was just 65 years old, a healthy man. So there was no reason. But whatever you've done, is for his good and our good. We might not understand it now, but one day we'll understand why you did it. That is the day as if an invisible hand held my spine. And from that day, I just, my whole life changed. That someone was constantly holding on and giving me that strength. That is the first I think lesson I directly got on faith. That my faith for him, that I surrendered even the most traumatic time in our whole family because our whole family collapsed. We were a very happy and loving family. So that is when then he, when we went to that interview, he held out and said that I'm your million father and million mothers. Then he asked us that, okay, what? He looked at me and said, kya hua? Kya bol? So I said, Father, uh, Baba, now I understand what your bibhuti means. He says, what do you mean by that? I said, my father was a very tall and handsome man, six feet tall, big house, powerful celebrity wife, children, cars, position, we are, we are a working family, but enough money. Ultimately, my brother and I had to go. He went in one dhoti. And we had just, he was a handful of ashes, which we immersed in the Ganges. So now I understand why you give us that vibhuti. That day, Swami just smiled and looked at my mother and said, Padma, don't worry about your children. They'll be all right. So this is my first thing is, Baba, whatever you do for us is for our good. We not understand it. It will now, but it will one day we will. And every step of my life, I have realized this. Every act of his, whether he said it or indirectly given us an indication, it has all has been good for us. And that is something which I has given me strength and I continue to live with that. I've been living 20, 22 years, I'm living alone. It is, it is him who's given us strength and taught us. When I say faith, again, I am a miracle. Today I'm going to be, this year I'm going to be 60. I'm a miracle of his. That in 1972, I developed a kidney problem. In those days, there was no kidney transplant or anything. And my mother had got these doctors from Bombay. They said maximum six months. And that was a time when, and also that time my brother was five years old. And my, my grandfather was a very old Vedic Brahmin. So he usually, once we were born, our Janam Patris were made and all that. Many of you all would know about it. And there it was said, my brother is going to live five years. If he passes that fifth, five years, 16 years, otherwise, 43 years. And if he lives beyond 43 years, then no worry about his life. So my grandfather used to get these Mahamitunjai japs done in Kashi Vishwanath temple and all that. So it was my brother's fifth year and it was my 10th year when doctors had said, I'm not going to live long. It just that happened, my grandfather passed away, the matriarch, uh, he was a head of the family. So one flat was empty. So mom gave it out for rent. 
So suddenly this lady called Nalini Rao came and said, can you give me rent? She, she's a very, very old devotee of Swami. So, and suddenly mom and they clicked. And so mom was helping her. They were same of the same age. Mom was lonely. She was absolutely in a total distress. Father gone, daughter dying. Son, one doesn't know. Janam Patri said he's not going to live five years. So she was a totally a shattered woman. So she was helping Nalini auntie to unpack. And suddenly these two photographs came. One was of Shirdi Sai Baba and one of Satya Sai Baba. So mom said, who are these gentlemen? So Nalini auntie said, why? She was saying this old man, when I was giving birth to Joy, my brother's name is Joy. He's been coming and giving me darshans in my dream. And this Afro haired man has been coming into my dreams and giving me darshan since my UK days when I was studying as a student. That's when she got to know who these two gentlemen or men were coming into her dreams. So then suddenly Nalini auntie said that, Padma, you're crying, your daughter's thing. We are going to Puttapati next week. Would you like to come? So she just had that leap of faith and she said, yes. She didn't even question. And that's when we, by third class, we reached Puttapati 1972. It was one day before Janmashtami. And after our darshan, he gives uh, uh, next, after that, Purna Chandra Hall was being made. So someone said, please stand there. He'll be passing by. Then you can talk to him. Suddenly Swami passes by and he says, huh? Kidar se aaya hai? So Swami said, uh, mom said, I'm from Calcutta. My daughter is unwell. So will you please? So he, Swami said that, doctor ko dikhao. My mom and dad, uh, Swami had this beautiful friendship and relationship. She never was, she used to talk to him like the way she would talk as like a lawyer. So first he says, Baba, if a doctor dikhane hoga, to hum, why would I come with third class and come and sit in front of you in this village? I've come to you. That time my mother didn't know anything about him. She didn't read anything about him. It's just that faith in her that this man has come into her dreams and Nalini Rao, she came. So Swami manifested uh, lots and lots of dibhuti and fed it to me. For a 10 year old to eat so much of ash, first of all, here we coming in and sit, sleeping on the floor in a village room outside. It was tough. By that time, my kidney had really gone bad. I had stopped urinating. And from next day, my kidney started functioning. So today I go for my regular executive checks up and all. Today with Baba's grace, I'm going to hit 60 this year. I've never had any medical problems. And so I am his miracle. And our whole family is her miracle. Then he called us for an interview next day on Janmashtami day. And uh, he asked mom, what do you want? So she said, Baba, I lost a father this year. So I'm looking for a father. I want a father. And my life, I wanted my father to give me mantra as a guru. But he passed away before I could take mantra from him. So I also want mantra. And you know both my children. So Swami looked at my brother and said, don't worry, he's my boy. And believe me, that's what happened. He, he gave, you know, I don't know whether you all do it in, uh, in Delhi. We in Bengalis, before one starts school, we call it Hathe Khodi, where we get a slate and some guru or some senior makes you write the first alphabet. So we carried that slate. Someone had told us in Darshan line, get it done, your son is just five years old. So we bought one. And Swami gave, wrote an ohm for my brother. And he gave me a locket. And he says, don't worry about it. Then that boy has become a very big boy. Is He is six feet, one inch tall. He was Baba's student. He's a triple FRCS. He's actually doing very well. So Baba kept his promise of taking care of my brother and keeping him alive. I'll tell you lots of miracles about his life. It, you will get goosebumps the way Swami has kept my brother alive. 
then he called my mother and said chalo i'll give you mantra you wanted a guru i'll give you mantra and he took her to that annex room in that uh, old mandir and gave her a mantra and my mom was shaking because thakur ramakrishna many many years ago had come into my mom's dream and given her a mantra that exact mantra swami whispered in her ears and from that day life just changed for all of us everything it is swami we never took a step without his permission whether we go for a holiday whether we leave pitupati what course to study what subjects to take it has always been that is where the faith is when i want to draw an analogy of faith is when we breathe the air do we check it out we breathe when we go, get on a flight do we check out the airlines we get onto the flight when we cross a bridge do we check the bridge before we go we get on it so we have faith in every aspect of our life when we go to the restaurant we eat the food with faith that it's going to be good it's not going to be poison so why is it that when we have to have faith in god that's when we start questioning and lose faith then comes faith with patience and surrender surrender and patience we also surrender to everyone so why can't we surrender to god and have patience and believe me everything which he has said has come our timing with god is we always count god's action with based on our timing of 24 hours but you never know when is god's timing is and whatever he has said directly or between lines everything comes is just patience and surrender surrender and patience faith surrender and patience even all the miracles every miracle in our life my mother's cancer she just left it to him never once i have had because ladies he doesn't give a single lady interview so he used to give uh, so i've been privileged and honored to get maybe over hundreds of interviews with my mother whenever he called she has never 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 asked anything about herself every time swami says padma what do you want he would say she would say swami i just want you and peace yes she prayed for us she prayed for her, her husband but never anything for herself that was the guru shishya relationship she had and they became best of friends they used to tease each other they used to fight they used to argue but never never when she was dying of cancer she was given the cancer thing every time he asked padma what do you want what do you want swami peace you are there with me i'm happy never ask that cure me her career never asked her for a career she was supposed to be the first lady supreme court judge but because of politics you know you would know that delhi politics they decided to last minute change her name she was supposed her name had gone in the law minister had called and said you are taking the swearing in after this the sera so we all ran to putaparthi to get swami's blessing and then go to delhi then newspaper came that someone else from another community and religion was taken for a election purpose i cried my father cried my brother cried there was not a single tear in her eyes when swami called for the interview uh he said what padma so she said swami i have got a god and a guru like you i have a husband like shiva i have two beautiful children 
Fatima baby hasn't got anything. So don't you deserve she gets something in her life? Let her be the Supreme Court judge. I'd rather have you, my husband like Shiva, and my children. And that day, soon Swami took her to his Supreme Court and soon after that declared her as the one of the Central Trust members. That is why I'm telling about my mother because I learned life and spirituality not only through Baba, but my mother's life. I'm sorry, I'm, maybe I'm rambling. Please excuse me if I'm rambling. But that's the kind of devotion she had and that's the kind of duty she had. When she sat on the bench in the high court, no one could understand the grief she's going through or the health issues she's going through. She would come home, sit in front of this Swami's photo, then she will cry. But no one could question uh, no one could understand. She never missed out on any of her duties. Similar miracles happened when, and that is why that was one of the beautiful things we got blessed with is I could talk about miracles about him curing my father of medical issue. The first heart attack, the doctors had said he's gone. We ran up in the intensive care. We went up five years back before he passed away, he had a heart attack. And suddenly mom, Baba opens my, my father opens his eyes and said, Baba was here. So Baba gave that five years extra to my father. So we said that, okay, he's given Punar Jana. So why not more years? Why not 20 years, 50 years? But we all come with our karmic duty. We have to fulfill. My father had completed his karmic duty, but that extra five years was given so that both his children are settled now. My brother, um, I get my job. My father, uh, my brother finishes his medical studies. And then he finished and he, and he didn't suffer a little bit and he died like a king. My father lived like a king, he died like a king. And the biggest blessings was that when he said, Padma's husband has come to me, to Mr. Narayan, 9.30, 1st March, it was holy day, 9.30 in the morning, my father breathes, breathes his last in, Cal a Calcutta nursing home and 9.30 in Puttapatti, he tells Narayan and the students that Padma's husband has come to me. So as a whole family, we are blessed that one of us could reach Baba's feet. The both Kastegi side and the Chatterjee side just are blessed. That at least one of us could reach God's feet. That is the kind of blessings he's given us. Now I would like to share some of the really beautiful gifts of honor he has given us and honored us. E e interviews when he used to call four of us, he would chair and beautifully in one of the interviews, he says, you know what? You live in my heart. You are my four Vedas. I think, I don't know. There's uh, most of you all have seen this movie, uh, Sound of Music. There's a song that somewhere in my wicked childhood, I must have done something good. I think somewhere in our life, we must have done something good, previous life or this life, I don't know what, that you could hear from God's mouth that my four Vedas, you live in my heart. Similarly, he had this, my brother, my father and I, uh, my mother and Swami had a very French relationship and she was quite a child. Many of you all might have seen her sitting there and she had this thing that she, Swami has to talk to her every day. She would need a Padnamaskar every day. Otherwise, she's going to start crying. She will have a long face. She will go to the Ganesha. She will do Pradakhina, that Swami, Ganesha, what have I done wrong? Swami is not looking at me. And I, that is something which I have picked it up also. That why isn't Swami talking to us? Why isn't Swami looking at us? And we'll go Pradakhina and beg Ganesha at the Ganesha gate. That could, Ganesha, please, Baba ko bolo, that gussa mat karne, baat karne ke liye hum ka saath. So one day Swami comes and says, if I don't look at her, if I don't give Padnamaskar, your mother gets angry with me. She fights with me. Doesn't she know that I have, she, she's my friend. She's, I've taken her as my friend. 
that day I told my mom that mom, if I could hear from God's mouth that he's taken me, we are all his devotees, but he's taken me as a friend. I will take hundred cancers to hear that one line that Bhagwan, you've taken me as, as a friend. And I am blessed to be the daughter of that woman. That woman has given me birth and my brother feels the same. He's been so proud of us that uh, uh, I was, my career in corporate world has been ups and downs. I was morbidly obese. I was tremendously shy. I was crazily body shamed. And you know that there was this issue of, oh, you're fat. That means you're lazy, you're buddhu. How hard I worked, I could never get them to get respect from them. So I used to constantly go. I used to write letters to Swami every day. It used to go into 10 pages, 8 pages, every day like a diary and post it to him. And every time I will go to his puttaparthi, put my head on his lap and howl. Just howl, howl and howl. He would say, Padma, your daughter will write letters to me every day, but she will write 10 pages and I have to read all of them. Why can't she write a little short letters? Then one day he just nearly got out of his chair, held my hand, looked into my eyes and said, I respect you. They don't respect you. Doesn't matter. You work for me. I respect you. And believe me, I left my corporate life. Those people who put me down now look at me with respect. Baba gave me respect. I'm a nobody. With an hour's notice, I was told to speak on the ladies' day. I got assignments from the government. I got assignments from people where I'm getting respect. And every time, it's always respect, respect. So Baba is constantly giving me respect. When I got my MBA degree, he just jumped up. Uh, I held it to him and my brother's FRCS degree certificate. Suddenly he took them, jumped up. He kept it in his heart and he jumped out and went out of interview room and was showing Giri uncle and all Giri uncle was the vice chancellor and the students and says, Deko, this is my boy, my boy. He's an FRCS, he's a double FRCS. And then he says, this is my, then Giri uncle comes and tells me, Rosie, come and meet me immediately. He was saying, would you believe it? What Swami said, that Padma's daughter, she's gone all over the world. She studied abroad, but she maintained her chastity and dignity. I want my girls to be like her. So he gave me respect and he gave, not only gave it to me in front of me, it's always outside. When my father, then the, another thing which I said was the biggest gift he gave us was my mother's last interview. Somehow when my mother was having cancer and all, she refused to take any major treatment. She said, whatever Swami gives. So Swami used to, my job was to fly down to Puttaparthi, tell him the doctor will make a list of these things that this is it. Shall I do this? Shall I do that? Shall I do that? If this happens, I will sit, go to the interview room. Swami will say, yeah, deo and he will give a little container of viputi and he'll say Pali mein pila ke mila do. and uh, she will sleep with so she went through that whole cancer journey without any pain that also he gave her extra years because when her first surgery was happening my brother was a surgeon he walked into the OT and he came back out of the OT crying one, because he said it has spread everywhere. They couldn't take out anything. They've stitched her back. And the uh, anesthesiologist, while the surgery was happening, he had forgotten to put the oxygen on. Suddenly there was a voice saying oxygen band ho gaya. My brother jumped and put on the oxygen thing and my mother, mother's cardiologist nearly slapped the uh, slapped the anesthesia losses for making this major because after all my mother was a VIP patient so this is it happened so he gave her also that extra years 
so that she could complete her duties and go. And so the last interview, he called us at Purna Chandra Hall. And I think somewhere it was that ladies day, he started the ladies day with her, made her light the lamp, as you can see the picture behind and made her do the inaugural speech and her book was released there. But that ladies day, he gave me a sari, but he didn't give my mother sari. That was a message that she will not live to wear that sari. So he also sends you messages, maybe not directly, but indirectly. In that interview room, I'm sharing a beautiful experience. I think my mother also got to know that she will because Swami came and handed me a lot of, a huge packet of bibhutis. I said, why are you giving me so many? He said, no, this is for your mother. You need it. So I took it. Then he, it was about one and a half hours or nearly two hours they were talking. Then my mother said, that, Swami, I'm a widow and uh, my children are here. I'm 68 years old. I'm an old woman. Mera ek shock hai. Will you keep it? You've given me hundreds of Padnamaskar. But I want the God's feet on my chest. Ek bar allow karega in front of my children. I'm an old woman. So Swami actually, she couldn't bend down because she was in a wheelchair. He actually lifted his feet up and put both his feet on my mother's chest and on her head. I think that was the way when he gave her the last goodbye. Then he said that you go back this day and, and he gave us all instructions. He told my brother, you go back to UK and everything and he gave the full instructions. And when I was doing Pad Namaskar, he just said, Matri Seva, Pitri Seva, the way you've done Matri Seva, your moksha prapti. Why am I saying it? It is not an ahankara, which is I'm telling you this story. It's for the younger people because Swami always says, Matri Seva and Matri Bhumi, Matri Seva and Pitri Seva and Matri Bhumi is so important. And that is why I'm giving you the story that God always honors you when you honor his instructions. And then when my mother passed away, we came back after, again, after the 11th day, I wanted to fly down immediately, but that time, um, Chiranjivi Rao uncle said that no, Rosie, Swami is very careful about you have to complete your duty, finish your 11 days and then come. So we flew down. The moment the 11th day puja was over, we took the flight out. <coughs> Next morning, he calls us for the interview. He had tears in his eyes, but he held our, our hand and said, no tears, no sorrow. 30 years ago, in her, I had told her, this is her last birth. She's got moksha. So my brother said, what do you mean, Baba? He says, no, it means that this is her last birth. Boy, this is her last birth. So again, we are a blessed family that both my parents could reach his feet. Even after my father's death, that, that picture I'm sharing you is for their 25th wedding anniversary. And he, it was... He was joking. As you can see, he's laughing and all. He was a friend. He used to make a lot of fun with us, joke, tease us. And so it was in Sundaram. He, you know, they, he used to get people on these special wedding anniversary days. He used to do the same ceremonies. So on their wedding anniversary, she, uh, he uh, manifested two rings and told them to exchange it. So they were exchanging the ring, looking at Swami. So Swami says, ah, you all are getting married. Why are you looking at me? Look at each other. And here two old couples, they were feeling shy, like newly married, looking at each other. And Swami was giggling away and we were laughing away. So even after my mother got lost, her, my father went away. On her, her birthday came. That was her 65th birthday. So she, uh, oh, her 60th birthday, sorry, I said 60th birthday, which was again a landmark birthday. So that is the day Sunday Swami looked at her and manifested her 
he said that a gold bangle and he put it in her hand he chanted some vedic mantra and he said that now you're wedded to god all your life you just you're going to do only god's life work and he gave that mantra and he says i would have given you two bangles but because your husband is with me i'm giving you one bangle but with this hands you're going to do only my seva and my work and since then my mother has was retired so only she devoted herself only to swami's work and the funniest thing is that i kept that when mom passed away he gave that bangle to me i was scared that i lose it and i kept it in the locker but there was a phase when i went through i could not do any work and especially when i was doing painting and all that suddenly there was a blockage suddenly one scientist devotee lawyer friend i was screaming to him that see i can't work i've got this huge blockage i can't work i can't work suddenly said rosy you're a fool where's that bangle take it out i said it's in the locker he said wear it i took it from the locker i wore it i went to puttaparthi put my head on the samadhi and i said baba kaam karne hoga and since then again suddenly i started painting suddenly my work started so even when i had surgeries and all i go to the ot and all i they take away all the jewelry i said nothing bring my ring and my bangle is there you wrap it and all but it's not going to come out of it only it will come out when i die i don't know sorry i maybe i'm going out of thing but it's again i'm going back to that thing my mom's last words and last interview then the promise i will take care of you this was happened when her biopsy report came we didn't tell her we just she got out of the surgery then the day the doctor was discharging her she said that her cancer surgery she said buy a ticket we are going to brindavan directly doctor said you are crazy she said i don't care so he said i'm not taking the risk she says i don't care i'm going so with a wheelchair we carried her up on the flight we carried her down then we took her to brindavan we didn't give her the biopsy report and so he called us at troy and while she was doing the par namaskar to him i handed over the biopsy report he looked at it and he just kept it in his in the corner then he looked at padma don't worry i will take care of your children you will not feel any pain don't worry just leave it and i promise you i will take care of you so that was the time when i like a kid looked at swami and i said promise swami and i held out my hand he held my hand like this and said ye muh se jo baat nikalta na kabhi jhoota nahi hota hai and believe me i promise i'll take care of you if you see my life my mother's life and my brother's life the amount of disasters which we avoided of is unbelievable i've lost money unpaid money has come work has come in the ot for a stupid silly fibroid surgery my heart beat stopped rani java sitting in puttaparthi praying for me swami comes and says ot mein hai heart beat kam ho raha hai बंद हो रहा है बट चिंता मत करो वो वापस आए हम हम आई एम स्टैंडिंग देयर माय ब्रदर स्टोरी लाइफ ही हैज दिस क्रेजी क्रेजी एक्सीडेंट्स इन द यूके ही इज कम आउट ही हैज केप्ट हिज वर्ड सो जो स्वामी का मुंह से जो निकलता है ना कभी इट विल कम बैक एंड दैट इज द स्ट्रेंथ so it doesn't matter to me if nothing happens i say boss oh aapka problem hai 
I call him boss. That's a joke. I'll tell you a little lightning in. My father, my when we were teenagers, Swami, I used to call him Big Boss. And my father was a very conservative person and a very senior, serious in some level. From college, I'll come, I'll drop my laptop, uh, my bag. We didn't have laptops that time, my book bag. And we had this Swami's long photograph. And I'll look at him and say, good evening, boss. And my father would get very, very angry. That you don't know how to respect Bhagwanji, Guruji and all that and all that. But how Swami gets to know everything. We were then, next time we went to Puttaparthi, that time, uh, Kulvantrai Hall was not there. We were sitting. Swami comes out. He passes me, smiles at me, and said, Boss, kaise hai? And since then, every interview, Boss, what news? So it has always been, He's my boss. So now also, anything happens, there's a boss. Aapka responsibility. Aap bola hai, jhoot mein bolega. And today I'm living alone 22 years. Even my COVID, twice, I came back. It's happened so many times. It's happened to my brother so many times. He's a surgeon. He, he's a brilliant surgeon. A 10 ton a truck went over him. His spine broke. Uh, oh, spine didn't break. His hip broke. I saw his CT scan within one millimeter, his spine would have broke. He would have been paralyzed for life. My brother didn't lose and his little daughter was walking next to him. The truck didn't hit the little daughter. My brother didn't lose consciences. He just started his own treatment there of that I'm losing blood and all. Two months or three months, I think it was, after he his broken hip, he calls me and says, Rosie, guess where I am? I said, where? He said, I'm on top of Mount Sinai. I screamed, are you crazy? How did you go there? He said, I climbed up. A boy who's broken his rib multiple times climbs up to Mount Sinai three months later. He's had major, you know, those kind of car accidents which happen, you see in the movies where they have pileups on M25, where the his car has got bashed, uh, the car behind him is damaged and destroyed. The car in front of him is destroyed. The people are badly injured. They had to cut the car to take my brother out. He just shakes his jacket and says, oh God, my mobile is gone and my camera is gone and laughs and walks away that the cops, the police are laughing. And when that accident is happening, I'm sleeping here in Kolkata. I get a dream that suddenly Swami runs down from the stage and he's pick, picked us up. So I get up and I said, did he pick me up or did he pick Joy up? Then I realized, no, Joy and I are same. We have the same blood. If anything happened to Joy, I would be destroyed. And if anything happens to me, Joy will get destroyed. So he's protected us. And immediately after half an hour, 45 minutes, my sister-in-law calls and says, this is what has happened. Joy was in an accident. And this is what happens that, so again, that five-year story, I'll say. How it happened, five years, Swami gave him that saying, don't worry, he's my boy. I will take care of him. Immediately after that, on his 15th year, suddenly Swami calls my mom and says, send him to Brindavan. And Swami, we took him out of, the Kolkata school, Lamatnia, and we went, he went to Brindavan. Since then, Swami took, away, took over his career and all. So what he did was he removed joy from us. He never stayed longer with us. Because after that, he's always lived then his medical school, and then he was in UK. So 15th year, he removed joy from us to stay with us for continuously, but he kept the boy alive. Then all the accidents happened. I still remember after his 43th birthday, I was in the relief and I went to Swami and I did on his birthday and I did pranam and all. He said, Koi chinta nahi. Oh, mera boy hai. Bahut bara hoga. And today he's one of the most uh, illustrious, he's a one of the very accomplished alumni of Baba. 
and also he has one thing i've seen my brother's also gone through difficult times in uk but his faith so many times i'll tell him that oh joy can i get this puja done for you or can i go to the astrologer and he said no swami's come into my dreams and said so he comes you don't need to do anything for me that's the kind of faith he has i still do pujas i still go to the astrologer once in a while kya bolo or you know i get this mahamitunjay jap done and all that but he said no he said no it's swami so he's constantly taking care of us ha bhai and that is what i wanted to say is that faith surrender and patience everything happens in time so why what he had told me maybe many years ago 20 years ago about respect i'm getting it now everything it is just surrender he's always tested my patience even the mantra that uh, because he gave my mother a mantra it became like i want a mantra i also want a mantra so i was going on every time what do you want i'll say swami mantra swami mantra he'll say you're not ready so i said swami what is what is that ready then he said that let me tell you there are actually you're not one person it is three person what others think you are what you think you are and what you really are so the day when these three are same that day i'll give you mantra and that continued for nearly 10 years swami mantra wait swami mantra wait and suddenly in 1986 a kali puja day we bengalis follow the kali puja day and it was diwali it was brindavan he invited everyone us first for lunch and then he gave us an interview sunny so said girl go inside so the smaller annex room so i said we to dat khayenge because he used to shout uh, i bahut dat khaya bhi swami se because i was fat i was not losing my weight and he wanted to me to get married so i was one of his problem kids so i said yeah aaj to gali khayega but that day that time i had lost weight so he just told my mother to wait at the door because he will not go into a single with a single woman alone in the room but he wanted that mantra to be told in my ears then he says kon bhagwan ka mantra chahiye so i said swami whatever you give me your choice so he whispered a mantra in my ears and that's the god i've been praying for he's my ishta devata since i was a toddler and again there was another time when swami used to give sarees to everyone and he had given my mom my brother my father lots of you know the rings and you know chains and lockets when i was 10 years old he had given me a locker after that i never got anything so mom would always say that no this time i'm going to ask swami there's something wrong why is he giving so i said swami mom you all are coming for the locket rocket and all that i've come for bigger things so mo bada cheez leke jayega so i don't want things immediately after that the next day i get a interview he gives me a diamond ring which you can see the picture he's putting it in my f- fingers so when you don't ask for mundane now he gives you the hira and that was a lesson learned i said so i don't ask for anything from him to jo de ka de and believe me it always happen i used to work for taj so there used to be a taj kazana very expensive sarees and all and there was this beautiful parrot green saree with a red border i would look at it see the price even though i used to get it, i would have got a employee discount i would never buy it ceiling on desire nahi baega i would look at it walk away the kazana girl will say buy it na suniti will give you a discount ha huh? i'll say no swami said no i don't need a saree one day i come back from puttaparthi my mom comes from puttaparthi she opens a suitcase out comes that same saree she he saw it in a puttaparthi store she bought it and oh, no, it was a bangalore store and she bought it so whatever whatever shock mera he's always given it to me but i never one thing is never ask 
दे देता है यू जस्ट हैव टू आस्क एंड लीव एट दैट ओके आई वॉन्ट दिस गिव इट टू मी बट योर विश आपका संकल्प वट एवर यू विश यू गिव मी सो ही इज ऑलवेज टेस्टेड माई पेशेंस be it at work be it at a spiritual journey and we've had a beautiful friendship he's constantly after my life for my weight loss but he he watches everything then i said swami i hate exercise so he will tell swami mom that padma how can she lose weight she eats a samosa with both her hands and exactly that's how i eat a samosa i will take the samosa i will with my both hands take the cover out first have the alu and then have the you know the patty so both to samosa khata hai do haath se ek haath se bhi nahi khayega then i said swami i hate exercise see sir but tum to disco dancing acha pasand karta ho i love to dance there were times i used to go to discotheques also he said to so, wo disco music ghar mein laga ke dance karo na tum to dubla ho jayega he would say that that's the kind of friendship we had the beautiful friendship so then one day i asked him that swami uh, kya mang raha hai ha i said swami i need 40 bibhuti packets ek miracle ek miracle i said what what miracle you want i said 40 bibhuti packets swami this is why i said every morning i'll have a packet of bibhuti and i'll lose one kg then i'm dubla ho jayega and that day he gave me a tight slap on the head so there were times when he was like even we got scolded like shiva but that is what is like the anger of shiva but the love of a loving father and a mother and a best friend have i finished half an hour i don't know the time scan i did talk about mom's wedded to god you do god's work mm-hmm. actually uh, you have completed an hour but um, if you'd like to finish no then i said okay the last thing i'll tell you is a beautiful lesson for women i will end it with that is when my uh uh this is i think which is very important because he was such a modern god and a guru is that when my mother became widowed she went she gave away her non vegetarian then she started wearing white she used to wear beautiful makeup red bindi lipstick a red nail polish she was very you know her life lovely thing she loved her makeup and clothes and all and she had this she didn't love jewelry but she loved her lovely sarees and all that so when swami saw that white saree and all then he suddenly asked padma tum hindu hai she said yes swami after 40 years of coming here you are telling me i am asking you whether i am a hindu i have a khastigir sons as a muslim surname but i am a hindu i am actually my father was a brahmin so then he says have you read the gita she said i've read it i don't know how much i understand so she said then why are you wearing a sari a uh, white sari she says uh, he said that i don't have a husband So she said. He said that didn't you read the Gita? The soul never dies. See why a daughter doesn't have a husband? Why is she wearing coloured clothes? Haven't you seen my sisters? They are all widows. They wear coloured clothes. I don't want to see you in sari. He slowly got her into wearing a coloured clothes. Next in Dashan line, he says, "Padma, you bow to Penta. Tha. He'll bend down." The that bindi so some lady next door from the uh, next to us gave her from a bindi on a bay bol bindi pehna do sister ko and then next day he comes in darshan line he says padma cosmetic pehnta tha tum kyu cosmetic nahi pehnta hai got her into lipstick and nail polish then my mother was a highly diabetic person and after we were leaving sandeep calls and tells me she's highly diabetic she's not well she should need protein give her back to normal food so he actually got her into eating non vegetarian for medical purposes eggs and fish because mom had also become a, a, so that is the way he was modern he, so he never believed in all these what we call in bengali ku sanskar that one has to the soul never dies 
that song of his was Swami's favorite. You know that humko tumse pyar hai kitna. So one day when we were in a uh, mandir uh, watching the sh- uh, archanums early in the morning, Swami used to come and suddenly watch. See, that was a beautiful because three, four ladies were allowed. And there was uh, uh, um, Sister Helen. She's a Greek doctor who, who used to work for Doctors Within Borders. So then he comes and says, Helen, sing my favorite song to Padma. And Helen sang that Hamko Tum Se Pyar Hai Kitna, that song. And then next day, and that was one of the most Swami staying there, the Puja Achanam happening, mom sitting there, Raghubur auntie was there. I was sitting at the back and Swami sings this Hamko Tum Se Pyar Hai Kitna. Uh, you, uh, Helen sings. The next day in the interview, he closes the door, sits in the chair, he leans back, and suddenly Swami sings that song to us. Humko tum se pyar hai kitna. Dilo ka dharkan tum ho sai ho. Tum hamara pran ho. I, we were crying. And since then, my mom and I, in every bhajan of our house, we sing that song to him. So if sister, any of y'all can sing it, we can end it with that. Because I have a, I can't sing. I have a horrible voice. I can't sing. Humko tum se pyar kitna saai tum hi jaanate dilo ki dhadakan tum ho saai tum hamare pran ho humko tum se pyar hai we love you dear sai we love Dear son, we 